Welcome back to Prestige Motorsports. Uh, today we're in the Performance Installation Center and you probably, we've talked about this engine in the past. Uh, it's one of our 582 uh, marine packages and there was a little backstory. We had another video uh, of why it came back. This was actually, it wasn't a warranty, but uh, a repair or a rebuild. Um, and we might dig into what happened there, but uh, for those of you that don't know, that we kind of have a marine side to our business. Obviously, you see a lot of, uh, you know, custom cars, full frame off restorations, uh, street rods, pro touring. We do all that. One of my big passions is the marine, uh, especially offshore power. So, um, I love doing these. We not only build the engine packages as complete as you see here, and we'll kind of dig into some of the details, uh, but we also do the rigging. So, um, and in in that realm as well. It's anything from something really small, uh, say family boat, pleasure boat, and then getting into uh, spec series racing stuff as well. But we had one recently leave, I think it was a Chaparral. Um, it was a 305 engine, so nothing special, um, but a nice upgrade. So they had left water in it, it froze, it busted, and uh, we put a 383 short block under it put the stock heads back on it, stock camshaft. It's a tremendously good upgrade, whether it's a family boat or not. Um, you can get on plane quicker. You can basically stay on plane at a lower RPM cruising and uh, fuel efficiency goes up. So again, something small, family uh, boats to offshore you know, racing and marine stuff. So uh, anyway, let's go ahead and dig into the, the details on this. So as I stated, it's, it's very, very complete. The more complete we do them, I, I prefer it that way, uh, especially even doing the installs. Again, 582, um, we do a variety of different uh, cubic inch ranges, anything small block, big block, uh, big blocks 496, on up 510 cubic inch uh, spec motors, and then uh, 540s, 555s, 582s, even 632s. So this though, uh, like I say, is our 582, it's a fuel injected version. So we're using a Holly HP to control it. We choose the HP over the uh, Terminator X, primarily because it's more weather resistant and vibration resistant because it's a, a fully potted ECU. Uh, so that's a nice upgrade. Obviously you can see it's got a big dominator flange uh, throttle body. Um, what we find is typically in these types of applications, because you're more plowed into the throttle than not, um, they respond really well. They definitely want all the airflow they can get to make good power. Uh, I think this one's somewhere in that 750, 760 horsepower range. Um, obviously it's got uh, the IMCO manifolds. We do anything from CMI, uh, big tube headers. It just depends on what the application is. We do weld in the uh, O2 bung uh, and that is primarily, you can watch other videos. Uh, we do our initial dynoing with all this stuff. We'll do a lake testing with the O2 and then we pull it out and put it into open loop for the life of the motor. So starting on the front, the front accessory drive, again, this stuff was, it was in the boat, so it's not as flashy as it usually is when it's brand new, but full front accessory drive, power steering pump, alternator, uh, stainless steel C pump from Harden. And then it does have the crossover and thermostat housing. Uh, I believe we're running like a 130 or 140 thermostat so we can get some temperature in the motor because it is EFI. There's some tuning criteria uh, with EFI in regards to how cool these typically will run. Um, but full front accessory drive. Uh, this time around, we spent a little bit more money on some areas, uh, just nice lifting brackets. Uh, you know, it just makes it easier to put it in. Obviously on this side, we've got a lot of hoses going on here. What we chose, Every, every one of these applications should at least run an oil cooler. Um, we chose on this particular application to run a thermostatically controlled oil cooler. So we don't overcool the oil. We want to get that up to temperature where it should be. Uh, again, this is all hardened marine stuff. Comes with a really nice filter relocation bracket and that incorporates the lifting bracket in the rear. Um, and this is their bar and plate cooler. This particular cooler is good for about a thousand horsepower. Um, they do have uh, dual cooler units that are for a specific bell housing, um, but this for 750 horsepower is probably a little overkill, but just better, better safe than sorry. All right, and you can't really see it, but right here is a pressure transducer. Uh, this is actually coming off the oil uh, filter or oil filter area of the block. 
So we're monitoring oil pressure because we put uh, draw safety strategies in the ECU to save the engine. So if it drops below a certain oil pressure uh, over a certain RPM, it will pull timing and pull fuel and kill the motor. Um, and we do the same thing with temperature. So if it gets over a certain temp, it'll pull timing, pull fuel as well. Um, so that's what this little sensor is here. Uh, the bell housing. So for the Bravos, uh, typically you can see when you run them hard, you'll crack a bell housing sometimes in this area. So we have just a simple uh, gusset that's been welded on here. And we have another video that explains the uh, uh, MDC drive, or this is a HP coupler uh, instead of a typical coupler like a, a Mercury, uh, just rubber style coupler. This actually has like Delron bushings in it. So if you do fly this thing high and you hit you know, back hard into the water, that it's not shocking the drive, this will actually absorb some of that. And it's a lot more robust than the Mercury uh, unit. All right, so obviously it still maybe looks a little messy, um, but overall, we didn't rig this boat originally. So when it came in, the wiring for the Holly, the MSD uh, was pretty atrocious. So what we did, we didn't start from scratch. I really wish we would have, uh, but nonetheless, tried to tidy up what's on the engine you have two specific harnesses. The Holly harness is gonna plug into everything Holly related. And then this harness here, this is just what's left of the boat harness. So you have, it goes down to the transom, like uh, trim, uh, mercathode. And then this is just your uh, RPM uh, wire. So your tack out and the uh, 12 volt key on switch 12 volt. So that's it, unplug and you got two separate harnesses you could take the boat harness off uh, and or the holly harness off. And then what's left really is, I'm gonna put terminals on these once we put it in the boat, but we have a small red, um, basically the MSD box and for the holly, uh, and then same thing on the ground side. So those two will get tied together, go direct to battery, and then we have one wire left. This is our uh, trigger for the fuel pump relay. Uh, we don't run the pump directly off this, but super simple. So one of the things I wanna point out, when we do a combination for you, obviously again, more turnkey, the better, um, whether we're doing the rigging in the boat or not, you can uh, ask to have it wired and cleaned up, fit the motor nicely, as well as the harness for, say your alternator, uh, all the gauges on the dash, et cetera. And we can do it one of two ways. What you see here, the reason we did this, they had already mounted the ECU uh, off of the engine. So we have basically our ECU plugs and then the MSD plug, super simple. And, uh, oh, that's the boat harness again, but um, very, very simple. And that's remotely mounted inside the boat. So you could be on the transom or off to the side, um, but it's still nice, simple, easy to install. The other method would be we, various brackets and stuff out there for mounting the circuit breakers, uh, starter solenoid, and you can have the MSD box and coil. As you can see, we have the coil mounted on top of the oil cooler, but you can, we, we can configure it that way, and usually to try to keep the engine clean, because that's a focal point when we lift the hatch, we could have an ECU mount bracket off of the side. Um, if it was a header, a big tube header, we can weld bungs on it to also mount it to that, uh, which works really well. I just, personally, I like to leave the ECU off of the engine um, just for vibration reasons. Although when you're hauling ass across the lake, obviously everything in the boat's shaking, um, but we offer it both ways. So obviously uh, remote mounted or we can mount it on there. Again, this is all things that you can a la carte to the engine build. So something else, probably somebody will bring up if you're in the marine world is that we don't have a lot of drop on this header and it does have a fairly decent camshaft. The water exits the header here. Um, two things about the headers. This, this design is likely gonna get changed based on looking at the boat and the overall height of everything. We need a, a much taller riser to come down and have more fall just so that way this thing doesn't eat water. We're gonna do some testing though uh, as you've seen, we've done tons of testing with sight glasses in here uh, to validate some things. Um, but also I wanna point out, this can be done from companies such as Harden, but in this case, this was a small block boat. So you can see that the, the tubes uh, are closer together. This is the original, and then we had it step over. So that's something that we're able and fully capable to do, custom rigging, custom install, 
uh, I'd like to say that there's really not anything that we can't accomplish. So uh, just wanted to give you an overview of this package. If there's something that you're looking for, uh, please don't hesitate to give us a call. And uh, we're going to put this mother in the boat.